we are essentially entering a new industrial revolution. We're going to wipe out millions of jobs in the, in the United States. Well, how far we are going to go could easily be that everything that really can be automated. I don't think it would be responsible to just let the consequences rip and then we find that large numbers of people are displaced and miserable and angry and well armed and we just figure well you know let's see what happens. We're going to need machines that can go up and down stairs, uh, go through hallways and doorways, uh, handle broken concrete and just generally go where people go. I'm at a robotics show at the forefront of what is quickly becoming reality. Can you really like push it around? Can I give it a shot? Yeah. Yeah, man. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. It's going to start to be a pretty commonplace thing to see robots trundling around in buildings, on the streets, etc. And that's only going to grow and grow and grow. Jonathan Hurst spun this company out of his robotics research at Oregon State University. In general, people's lifestyles are going to change, and that's going to change the way cities look, too. This is a story about how robots will affect jobs. But first, we need to understand how far artificial intelligence and robotics have already come. Warehouses and factories are being run by robots as the lights are turned off to save on energy costs. Sensors that power autonomous movement are much faster than ever before. Cars and planes are operating by themselves. Robots are doing fine detail work and responding to our every move. They're entering the service sector, displacing fast food workers and baristas. In five to ten years' time, robotics is going to disappear from our awareness because it is going to be what all of our smart products have and do. Robots are replacing jobs like security guards with self-driving surveillance vehicles. I said step away from the machine. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Hey. Hey. Five. Four. Three. <laughs> what? Really? Two. We're not all the way there. This company had a few public mishaps, like this robot suicide in a fountain. I asked the CEO about it. You're never going to learn uh, without actually being out in the field. So the kinks are getting worked out quickly, and today it's impossible to see such futuristic technology without wondering about the impact on jobs. An endless array of robots are entering our everyday lives. Pair that with advances in artificial intelligence, machine learning, 3D printing, and the changes are hard to comprehend. Worldwide, 800 million jobs could be automated by 2030. In the United States, up to 73 million jobs are at risk. Changes like these have taken place throughout history, like the industrialization of agriculture. Only this time, it's on a far faster time scale. Jonathan said he, too, has concerns about job displacement. Definitely something that can be handled well, as long as um, governments and policymakers are aware of these changes that are happening and planning for it and preparing for it. You think we're doing that? I do not think that we're doing that at present. Numerous companies turned down requests to talk about the effects automation will have on employment. You know, you don't want to write a banner over your company logo, we are America's job killers, correct? So like, you know, that's the last thing that you want to do. And one of America's biggest job killers may be driverless vehicles, already driving on our roads. This promo video shows Google's subsidiary, Waymo, operating self-driving vehicles on the road without a driver to take the wheel if something goes wrong. But companies like Google, Toyota, Tesla, GM, and Uber declined to discuss innovation or jobs, even as they greenlit the use of these promotional videos. Uh, we're recreating a scenario where we've had a pickup truck drive along the track and actually dump some hay bales out of the back randomly. So what you're going to see is our car senses, does a safe lane change, senses the next one, and also then changes back. The vehicles are arriving faster than many might expect. GM announced that a vehicle without any human controls would hit the streets in 2019, and Uber placed an order for up to 24,000 self-driving Volvos last year. The task for society with regard to car driving, Uber drivers, taxi drivers, truck drivers, is to think about um, what we 
want to do with people who are displaced. It's not hard to picture the Uber and Lyft-based gig economies collapsing as self-driving cars arrive. Every day, those drivers are giving companies the valuable data needed to automate. Many in the gig economy are unwittingly teaching artificial intelligence how to do their jobs. 3% of the American workforce drives for a living, and that doesn't include hotels along highways, truck stops, restaurants, and other support jobs. Total trucker salaries alone add up to $300 billion per year. So it should come as no surprise that Uber got into the trucking business by building a technology platform for delivering freight and by buying an automated truck startup called Auto. If you're a truck driver right now and you haven't started thinking of getting some extra training education or so, then you're in a difficult position. So I went to meet up with some truckers at the Great American Trucking Show in Dallas, Texas. Trucker Brown was instantly recognizable because of his prolific YouTube page. This is Trucker Brown. Hello. You got a little dog right What's here. What's going on? He does videos on everything about trucking, and that includes automation. This was an avenue for people to go in to pull themselves out of poverty and have a middle class job and an honest wage. And it's, it's gonna, they want it to be gone. It's hard to overstate the importance of an entry level middle class job for millions of Americans. Every person that I see here is taking care of four other people, their family, every single person you see. And that shows you how much trucking is feeding the country. For Trucker Brown, the profession has given him a middle-class lifestyle where there are few other options. When I first seen automated trucks, the first thing I thought is, what else could I do? And I ended up being homeless a few times and trying to, trying to find my way. My granddad was a trucker. My father's a trucker. I have three brothers that are truckers. My aunt's a trucker. If it becomes automated, that's gone. Then, then what, what, you know, what are the blue collar of America supposed to do? At the truck show, I met up with Todd Spencer, executive vice president of the Owner Operator Independent Drivers Association. For the vast majority of the population, they really have no comprehension of just how essential trucks and truckers are. Trucking is the most common job in 29 U.S. states. It's really difficult to think that this is something that could be automated very quickly or very easily. Like Todd, few of the truckers at the show believe automated trucks will arrive within the next decade. Anybody who does technical backing in the docks or driving uh, in inner cities, automated trucks, good luck to them. Uh, there's a lot of places to get into, so I don't think an automated truck can probably get into that place. Nationwide, it's starting to sink in. A recent poll found that 72% of Americans expressed concerns about robots taking their jobs. When it's cheaper to replace a worker with a robot, then eventually it'll happen. Brown drives with LaShawn Parks, who also has a YouTube channel. They largely agree on the dangers of automated trucking. Everything's automated. <laughs> Everything's automated. So, so now you took my above the poverty line job, I say, I'll just go work at a burger joint, and that's automated too. When The thing is, when does it stop? A 2016 White House report estimated that 1.3 to 1.7 million truck drivers are at risk for job automation. Add in taxis, chauffeurs, delivery trucks, and other drivers, and that number rises to 3.1 million. And even though Trucker Brown and LaShawn have an idea of what's coming, there's still healthy skepticism. But I don't, I don't, I don't see how it can get through bad weather and, and icy roads and uh, you know things like that. I just don't see it happening. At the end of the day, to me, I still believe that a driver is going to be needed to be in that truck. It's actually a common argument for automation, letting robots do tasks that are repetitive, boring, and unhealthy. The service industry is also transforming. From line cooks to baristas to servers, jobs are changing overnight. What Zoom is doing is using automation to eliminate tasks. Tasks that are unsafe, tasks that are boring, tasks that are repetitive. And what we're doing is we're elevating the occupation. 
So we're thinking about task automation versus occupational automation. Bigger brands are catching on. Pizza Hut just announced driverless delivery and claimed that it could actually create more jobs. Julia Collins, the CEO of Zoom Pizza, took us through some of the efficiencies of the process. And now we're using a vision system to monitor the path of the pizza. This is a pizza that gets our spicy sauce. Giorgio dispenses classic sauce. Marta is our sauce spreading robot. This is everyone's favorite robot. So we have a robot that never drops pizza and he never gets burned. The line is optimized to do as many as 360 pizzas in an hour. That's really quite fast. Zoom Pizza is not alone in trying to change the industry. Well, there are a lot of t um, tasks in food preparation that are highly repetitive and low productivity. So anything that's like doing the same thing over and over again or moving a box around um, or moving a cup around, a lot of those things can be automated. Even historically safe, stable, white-collar jobs like doctors, lawyers, and bankers are at risk. There are a lot of people who think this is all about blue-collar work. It is not. We already use services like TurboTax to replace tax advisors. At least your taxes are free. Amazon's Alexa and Apple's Siri have taken on secretarial tasks and much more. Hey Siri, read my schedule. You have 25 appointments at 7.15. Artificial intelligence is making inroads on the legal profession, financial sector, and the medical world. We need to start thinking about what's going to happen when uh, large numbers of highly skilled and narrow skilled human white collar workers are displaced. Hello there. My name is Movo. Welcome to IROS. You can get to know me and all I can do over the next minute and a half. The medical field is huge. In service robotics, if you want to identify the, a key area of growth, uh, it will be in the medical field. That is where everything is going. Movo is a research robot launching this year, and other robots have already made advances in medicine. Some surgeries have been transformed by robotics, and I tried out one of those machines. <laughs> okay, how's this work? All right, so um, go ahead and put your head in, so this system will Protect your head presence and so okay. allow you to Jobs in fields like medicine and law will be just as affected by software we can't see than robots we can. Techies are in a race to replace jobs like radiologists, who spend much of their time looking at medical scans. Right now we're able to read images about 10,000 times faster than human radiologists. Uh, so you can see that uh, we just processed 765 studies. That's about two days worth of work for a normal radiologist and we were able to process it in about 46 seconds. Kevin Lyman is lead scientist at Enlytic, a startup working to redefine the role of a radiologist. Deep learning is essentially a series of algorithms for trying almost every possible combination, and what it ultimately arrives at is just an equation. I asked Kevin if his work could cause radiologists to lose their jobs. AI, for us, is creating a lot of jobs for radiologists and other doctors. Training AI to effectively do this is an enormously difficult task. So today I have to go to the doctor. Tomorrow there'll be artificial intelligence software that analyzes the information. That will keep track of my, my, you know, my heart rates, my, 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 my bloods. AI software will know hundreds of millions of people. So it will have much, more better, much better knowledge than our doctors do. This is all happening faster than expected, and many of these techie dreams are already within sight. I've got, a, I've got a four year old kid and a, a nine month old kid, and the things that I know about their future, they're never going to learn how to drive a car. When people worry about cars being hacked or driving into people, they often forget the daily toll that could be avoided. The World Health Organization estimates that 1.25 million people die each year in traffic accidents. In the United States, that number is 34,000. I don't want a human driving my car or flying the plane because humans are infallible and don't learn as fast as, as technology. So 10, 15 years from now, rather than having servants and maids and chauffeurs, we'll have robots serving us. Before we arrive at the utopian world of the Jetsons, the shift is likely to be a bit more dystopian. So now what happens to the people? What happens to the, to, to the, to the Uber drivers? What happens to the truck drivers? What happens to the entire support system around these people? It begins to vanish. Over another five year period, we're gonna wipe out millions of jobs in the, in the United States and you know, tens of millions of jobs in the developing world. What happens to those people? Hey, 
I'm Joel. Thanks for watching part one. I hope you'll stick around for part two where I talk about how automation will affect cities. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.